I want to collect lots of totems in my hardcore world. Thousands of them. These will allow me to cheat death forever. To do this, we will need an infinite totem farm. To get totems, we need to defeat a raid, meaning we need to find a pillager outpost. Arriving at the outpost, we need to find the pillager holding a banner. Killing him will give us the bad omen effect. Now, we need to find the village to start this raid. After defeating that raid, we got 5 totems and a bunch of other loot. That whole process took about 20 minutes. 5 totems is great, but I want a lot more. To do that, we're going to need 2 things. A bad omen farm and a raid farm. We'll do the bad omen farm first. This farm will be made using the pillager outpost. So to build this farm, we're going to need a bunch of grass blocks, glass, kelp and a few other things. And while we're at it, let's melt the sand into glass. Okay, that should be everything we need. Hold on, I just had an idea. Let's go collect some of the obsidian we got from removing the end island to set up a nether portal. And while we're at it, let's move our other portals to the nether roof until we build a nether hub. Arriving at the pillager outpost, let's set up a quick staging area, grab the blocks we need and start working on this farm. To start, let's go on top of the outpost and place a block of soul sand. This is the start of the elevator that the pillagers will use later. Next up, let's take the grass we collected and build a spawning platform. Following that, let's build a small platform that will come back to later. Now let's place some glass walls on either side of the soul sand, place some trap doors and then some signs to hold in the water. And now we build the elevator up and into the sky. When we get to about 115 blocks or so above the spawning platform, we build the killing area. Then we fill the elevator with water add a lot of kelp to make sure it's all source blocks. That way when we enter at the bottom, it takes us all the way to the top. Lastly, we go back down to the bottom and use some glass panes to make an enclosure around the glass platform and summon an iron golem. This guy will get the pillager's attention. And finally, before we give this farm a test, let's remove the staging area from below and move everything up to the killing area. And now, it's time to give this farm a test. That test was successful. I ended up getting bad omen really fast. This farm is something everyone should have in their worlds. With that, I consider this bad omen farm complete. Now, I need to get rid of the bad omen effect real quick. Next up, let's work towards building the raid farm. So first of all, the resources required to build this farm are a tad bit insane. It's only 7,484 items. Fortunately, I already have some of this stuff sitting around in the world. So over at the village area, I had a bunch of stone saving chests from when I mined that area out. So that saved me a bunch of time. I just need to craft this into the stone related items we need. I also collected some shovels of logs because we're going to need that later on. Before we continue, we should probably handle this storage situation. So... Ah, much better. Now that the storage situation is sorted, let's head over to the nearby desert once again to gather sand. I should probably build a sand dipper at some point. And while we get the sand smelted, let's gather everything else we need. Okay, I'm almost finished gathering resources. I'm still missing two things, a honey block and four beacons. I thought I had a honey block around here, but I can't find it. Oh well, let's get some into bottles and now it's time to find some beehives. While I was collecting that honey, I also collected the beehives. I have a plan for these in a future episode. And when it comes to getting beacons, I'll get them after we finish building the raid farm. So, with all of these resources ready to go, let's start work on this raid farm. To build this, we're going to need a decently sized ocean fairly close to the pillager outpost with a village nearby. This ocean should be perfect. Now, let's start constructing this farm. First, we need to clear a chunk of this ocean all the way down to Y20. Let's place some walls to hold back the water. And now, let's drain this thing. Since I don't have sponges yet, we'll have to do this the old fashioned way, using sand. Okay, now that the water is gone, we still have a long way to go. We should have done this in a deep ocean biome. Oh well, let's get the pick out and clear this all the way down to Y20. The process of digging out this chunk was excruciatingly slow. I kept on encountering dirt and gravel, which slowed me down substantially, and lots of water filled caves. The sand came in handy for those. At the end, I realised that I'd forgotten my beacon. It was still over at the villager area. I'll remember that for next time. At the bottom, I placed a floor of glowstone to light things up, followed by a layer of glass on top. I then placed the first of many villager holding cells. Next up, let's build the first large collection of villagers. The top of the area we just cleared out should be perfect. Thank you. 
I'll populate this once the raid farm is complete. This module and the others to follow make use of redstone, so we need a way to transfer a signal from the top of the farm all the way to the bottom. There are several ways we can do this. We could have a redstone line going all that way, use some slime stone, or we could use the far superior wall. Updating a wall at the top will send a signal right to the bottom. Now, let's take this wall up and into the sky. Part way up, I need to build a second villager module. I then pillar up some more and build a final villager module right below where the farm will be. I also make a start to the bottom of the storage system with some pistons. And I build a large glass platform to store all of my shulkers and to gain access to the storage system. Now I add the finishing touches to the wall pillar so the construction of the bottom section is now complete. Since that section is done, my new goal is to get the storage system mostly complete. This storage system is quite interesting. Typical raid farms make use of a standard chest wall and nothing else. We can't do that for this design. This design would fill a standard chest wall in under an hour. Not great when you plan to AFK for multiple hours at a time. To make the most efficient use of space, we'll be making a storage system that uses shulkers. Approximately 300 shulker boxes per hour that we AFK. The shulker loaders we are using in this farm are quite large because they operate at two times hopper speed, meaning we need less of these modules to get the same results. Unfortunately, this means that I'll have to go crawling through the system later on to get the AM sorters working properly. Now that I've explained how the storage system works, let's build it really fast. Before I finish the storage system, I place a large beacon base, enough to support 4 beacons, followed by the item water stream. This means I can now cover all of this with a final layer of glass. Now we get to the main event. Let's build the final section of this farm. This is where we spawn the raids and kill them soon after. First, let's connect what we've just built to the wall signal. For this, I'm making use of a leaf block and a strip log. This sounds a bit mad, but there's a perfectly good reason. Leaves have a variable that checks how far the nearest log is. You can see this in the F3 screen. We can manipulate that by moving the log using a sticky piston. When we do this, the leaf variable updates, which can be detected with an observer producing a one tick redstone pulse. We send that redstone signal into the iron trapdoor, which is adjacent to the wall. When the trapdoor is powered, the wall shape updates and sends the signal all the way down to the villager holding modules below the farm. After getting that done, I need to build a section where the raids will die and the items are collected. This system is quite complex. I will stand in the middle, attacking an armor stand every 10 game ticks or so. The splash damage from my sword, in this instance a sweeping H3 sword, will move to another armor stand within the bowels of the farm, activating the pressure plate, sending a redstone signal throughout the entire farm and killing the raids at the same time. Now that the underlying mechanics of this farm have been explained, let's get it finished. So while we are getting this farm finished, I made a few critical errors. I spent some additional time after getting things finished making sure everything was fixed and ready to go. Then I finally added the last bit of the storage system which is the ability to turn the shulker loaders on and off. And with that, the construction phase of this raid farm is complete. Now we need to create the nether side of this farm. Fortunately, this will be quick and easy to do. First, let's activate the nether portals within the farm. Then I need to go through to find out where we need to place this segment. This place won't work. Right, let's deactivate this portal and make for the nether roof. On the roof, I need to make a 3x3 nether portal. When it comes to setting up nether portals, you need to know two things. The overworld coordinates and the nether coordinates of your portals. For the overworld coordinates, I picked a location between the portals within the farm and I took note of the X and Z coordinate. To transform these into nether coordinates, I simply divide them by 8. And there you go, your portals are now perfectly aligned. The whole reason we need this portal system is to kill ravagers. We can't do that right now. We can fix this by building a glass chamber around the nether portal and filling it with lava. And with that, the nether side of the farm is now complete. Now, I need to fill this farm with 37 villagers. To breed the villagers needed for this, I'll use the villager setup over in the villager area. Breeding all the villagers needed for this project took several hours. Once that was done, I set up the required infrastructure to move the villagers over and into the raid farm. The easiest and fastest way to do this was using the nether. Once that infrastructure was in place, I was able to quickly fill each module with villagers. Now, I'm at the stage where I can start using this farm, but I still have a problem. My current sword won't work with this farm. My sword has a fire aspect enchantment which will destroy the armor stand. This will have to be replaced. So what I'd like to do is make a brand new sword for general use, a sword dedicated for this farm, 
and a helmet since I don't have one of those yet. These are all enchanted as well. Good thing we have villagers for that. While I'm at it, I should probably get Swift Sneak 3 on my leggings. This means I'll have to travel over 5,000 blocks to find the nearest ancient city. This is the first I've tackled an ancient city since it was released in 1.19. I snuck around the outside walls of the city removing skull creakers and looking for chests. Doing so, I found lots of loot, including two enchanted golden apples and a Swift Sneak 3 book, all without summoning the Warden. Since I like to overboard in this game, let's upgrade all of this new gear to Netherite. I also want to upgrade the other tools in my inventory, which means we will need 6 pieces of Netherite, which translates to 24 pieces of Ancient Debris. I have the perfect mining spot for this in the Nether. I was down there mining for around 2.5 hours. After collecting all that Ancient Debris, I quickly went to the gold farm to repair my tools and to collect 24 gold. I then used this in combination with the Netherite scrap I got from smelting the Ancient Debris to create 6 netherite ingots. And now, after nearly a year in this world, all of my gear is now fully upgraded to netherite. This upgraded gear was now perfect for hunting wither skeletons, which is ideal considering we need 4 beacons for this farm. I was only in the nether for about an hour before I had the 12 wither skulls I needed. Then it was just a case of going to the end and using the central end portal to quickly kill 4 wills. It then took only a few minutes to craft and install the beacons and to apply the required effects. I also used this time to add the farm saw to the wall using an item frame. And now this farm is ready to go. Before I use this farm I need to deal with the storage situation. As it currently stands we will go through 300 shulker boxes per hour that we use this thing. But I plan on expanding this so I will need a lot more. The issue is that I can't currently craft that amount. To start my shulker farm is completely broken and I farm all of my wood manually. Let's fix that. First, let's work on a wood farm. My favourite type of wood to farm is spruce. I typically farm them by laying out a bunch of saplings to grow 2x2 two two spruce trees. This gets lots of wood, but takes ages to remove. What if I told you there's a farm that can do all of that? The resources required are a tad bit insane as you can see here. Fortunately, I've gathered a lot of this stuff already from when I did my resource collection earlier on. Let me get them organised real quick. There we go. For this farm, I'm going to build it in the spawn chunks and will most likely move it elsewhere later on in the world. This farm is broken up into three parts. The first is the bone meal farm which supplies 15,000 bone meal every hour. It converts stone to moss, then passes the moss through a composter to create bone meal. I'll build this one first. This bone meal farm was designed by Elmango and is fast and easy to use. Plus, it's easy to expand. I'll be using this design a lot later on in the world. Next up, we have the tree farm itself, which was designed by Activation. This thing is quite complex. The design is completely free of honey, which is great considering that I don't have a farm for that. Plus, it produces 161,000 logs per hour. The final part I need to construct is the storage system, which for the sake of time, I'll go with a bunch of shulker loaders. These shulker loaders are far more primitive than the ones used in the raid farm and are easier to build and work with. And with that, the wood farm is complete. I will still need to fill the storage system with shulkers, so I should probably build a new shulker farm. This new shulker farm should be a bit simpler and easier to build, mainly because it uses a bunch of scaffolding blocks. Fortunately, I have a small bamboo farm back in my starter base, which should be more than enough for this project. After harvesting a bunch of bamboo and doing a lot of crafting, I have all the resources needed for this project. When it comes to making this farm, I'm going to build it right behind the tree farm. Since this farm was a bit simpler than the previous one, I was able to build it a lot faster. It's made up of two elements, the central area where the snow golems fire at the shulker and the spawning platforms around that, which are made of alternating layers of scaffolding and slabs. This leads up top to where the shulkers die due to entity cramming and their drops are collected in this chest. This farm produces 750 shulker shells per hour, so I might need to expand this storage system in the future. Now, I need to get this farm up and running by getting a shulker. I've went ahead and set up a rail line with an activated rail at the end. This should eject the shulker into the farm. Normally, I'd have to go and collect a shulker from the end, but I already have two back at spawn from when I first built the original shulker farm. I'll use one of these shulkers and we'll keep the other one as backup. And after a few moments, this shulker was in the farm meaning that the shulker farm is now complete. And after all of that, I want to do an AFK session with both the shulker farm and the tree farm running. With the shulker farm, it's just a case of flicking a lever, but with the tree farm, it's a bit more complicated. First, I need to jumpstart the bone meal farm. I can do this by inserting some handmade bone meal into the farm and flicking this lever. After a few minutes, this farm should be up and running. I'll let this run until it starts to fill the tree farm with bone meal. Then, it's just a case of turning on the tree farm, entering the minecart in the middle, 
and going AFK while a place in these saplings. That AFK session got off to a bumpy start. That tree farm kept on breaking because of some composters I placed in the storage system. I wasted quite a bit of AFK time before fixing the problem. After that, the farm worked perfectly. As you can see from that chest, I got a lot of wood in the time this thing was working. About 55,000 logs of my math is correct. This was a good investment. The shulker farm also worked perfectly during that time. But it stopped all other hostile mobs from spawning. The success of both of these farms means that I can populate the raid farm with shulkers. But first, I need to make a few changes. This raid farm produces 898,000 drops every hour. But with the current storage setup, we only store a small percentage of that. This needs to be expanded massively. Since I already have the design, building this should be fairly fast. This new expanded storage system will be used to store all of the redstone, gunpowder, glowstone and balls that this farm produces. I'm also making a massive section at the end to store emeralds. Now you may have noticed that I left a large gap between the emerald storage and everything else. This is because we're going to store the totems in this section. Sorting and storing totems within dying is an interesting challenge because totems are unstackable items and will break traditional item sorrows. However, with recent updates to the game, that's no longer a challenge. I simply need to make use of an allay, three to be exact. Back at the pillager outpost, there are two allays in a cage. I can duplicate them using an amethyst shard. And for the sake of this story system, I'm going to put them in minecarts and move them over to the raid farm. I'm going to go with a chest wall at the bottom to store the totems and we'll leave some space where the hopper should be at the top for the allays. To get them to fill the totems properly, I'm setting up some redstone with no blocks. That way when I use the farm, I need to flick this all over for this system to work perfectly. Now, all I need to do is move the lays into this hole, cover it up, and this storage system is ready to use. I now have the tedious task of crawling through the internals of the item fillers, filling them with the required items. I'm also going to destroy all other items right before the emerald section, because I don't need emeralds right now. Plus, it would eat through my shulker supply rapidly. And then, for the sake of keeping things nice, I'll use some item frames to label the storage system. After all of that, I'm finally ready to use this farm. It's just a case of going to the bad omen farm, using it for a few minutes to get the bad omen effect, then coming back over here to the raid farm and beginning my first AFK session. That AFK session was a huge success. I got shulker upon shulker of redstone, glowstone, gunpowder and balls, plus an insane amount of tomes. I'm never going to die in this world, so I suppose I should probably burn most of this. Nah, just kidding, I'm saving this for later because chances are we're going to need it. 